Peace be with you. Today is Pentecost, the day the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples of Christ. And they were able to receive this Spirit because they were all with one accord in one place. We cannot forget how often the disciples quarreled among themselves when Jesus was still with them, on who will be the greatest. But before he left them, he breathed into them the Spirit of peace, which rectified their mistakes as in John 20, 19-23, and disposed them for the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the same way, in spite of the variety of our interests and the sentiments, we are encouraged to be in peace. For where brethren gather together in unity, there the Lord commands his blessings. Now, let's discuss how the Spirit came. It came suddenly, sooner than they expected, like the sound of a rushing mighty wind from heaven. For the word of the Spirit is like that of the wind. John 3.3 3. But why wind? It was to put them into a very serious, reverent, and composed mood for the reception of the Holy Ghost. Just as it prepared Ezekiel for the dry bone to rise again, as in Ezekiel 37 verse 9, and also prepared Elijah to discover God in a still small voice, 1 Kings 19 verse 11. Bear this in mind. The Spirit came with a gentle flame and not devouring fire. For the spirit is not meant for destruction, but for construction. Now, let's discuss the effects. The Holy Spirit was given to the disciples not only to endure them with knowledge, but also with a power to publish and proclaim that knowledge to the world. The dividing tongues of fire that still maintained unity bring to our mind that amidst the diversity of expression, there can still be sincere unity of affection among us. We could recall that it was by the dividing of the tongues at Babel that the builders lost God's knowledge and misunderstood themselves as in Genesis 11 verse 7. But by another dividing of tongues at Pentecost, God restores the knowledge of himself to us and enabled us to build his church. With regard to speaking in tongues, it was a pleasing surprise for the strangers to hear the language of their own country being spoken by the Galileans who had never been opportune to learn a language either by a book or by conversation. That is to say that God chose the weak and the foolish to confound the wise and the mighty. And what was the content of their speech? In Greek, it is called Megaleia to Tehu meaning the wonderful works of God. This therefore implies that the sacred record of all God's wonderful works should be preserved by all nations in their own different tongues. Finally, their personal lives confirmed the presence of God's Spirit in them, such that they became holy, heavenly, spiritual, loving one another and rejoicing more in the love of Christ, such that their grief and fears were swallowed up. May such virtues confirm also the presence of God's Spirit in us. God bless you.